Hi friends, it's Renee here and I have finished the bag that I was talking about that in the previous video that I was trying to do the zipper overlay for my friend and I interfaced it with Decaville Heavy which I will never ever do again and I don't recommend it and I did a recessed zipper. My zipper is by My Handmade Space and I did a zipper on the front, pocket on the front as you can see. I did rivets on my um, handles. I was going to do those um, cutouts and I'll tell you why in the video why I didn't. You'll see why in the video. It's just kind of crazy. It's me. So I did an inside zipper pocket and two slip pockets. This is for a friend of mine. Her husband wanted a more stiff purse for her because she carries this floppy purse and he wanted pockets because she could never find anything. So that's why I did thinking Decaville Heavy would be a good idea. It's not a good idea. I would do a uh, foam, fusible foam, one side fusible foam, and woven fuse two over that to make it a little more stiff bag, but not this stiff. I got my exercise doing this bag. I think I feel like I'll work out for a week just trying to pull it through. <laughs> so if you want to see all the craziness, all the struggles, and my workout, Stay tuned. Don't forget to give me a like, a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And if you want to see more craziness from me, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm starting back with my tote bag that I tried to do the um, overlay, zipper overlay, and I decided not to. It didn't work out. The zipper overlay is fine for another bag, but for this one, it just didn't work. So I'm leaving it as is. And I debated whether to just pull off the Woven Fuse 2 and the Decaville Heavy because I'm thinking it's going to be too stiff. But it's done. It's a done deal. So we're just going to work on it. So I've already done one strap that I showed you earlier, I believe. I'm supposed to connect that video that I did earlier. If I don't, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Such a professional. So I always draw a center line and I put my double sided tape down the center line. And for those of you that are new, my double sided tape is from Clover. Now also this is a uh, half inch and I like using half inch when I'm doing my straps. So I can just put one side down and tape one, um, another side on this side down, just put it down the center, if that makes sense. One this way on the tape and one that way on the tape. But, so you don't have to use a quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on that side. Just use a half inch. Now here's my quarter inch tape. And I get that from Dollar Tree. So, everybody knows, or most people know, unless you're a newbie. You just fold this up to the center, almost to the center. I leave a little bit of space. I try and leave a little bit of space. This is uh, black faux leather from my punk embroidery. It is so soft. I just love it. And I wish they had it in red. They're getting ready to have their big sale. Oh, I need to check that. I think it was going to start within an hour. Okay, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to check this sale. Okay, I hadn't started yet. It's about 30 more minutes. So I'm going to do a couple of things and then I'm going to check back for the sale. I got stuff in my cart I want to get. I don't think anybody wants what I have in my cart because it's flawed. A little flawed, but I saw a video um, on Netflix. Was it Netflix? Somewhere. Oh, I got a message today. Netflix is going up in price again. We might have to do away with Netflix. Um, but anyway, I saw a girl in this video. I think it was a Hallmark video or a Lifetime video. And she was carrying a red patent leather purse that I just loved. So, I'm looking for red patent leather. I hope it's not too flawed. So, I put it in the center. And then I'm going to fold it over again. And I'm going to put some clips on it. For those of you that are new, we never use pins on vinyl. 
or a waterproof canvas. And these clips. These clips are hair clips from Walmart. I gotta get this sewed up. If y'all hear banging, it's my husband outside. He is making me a barn door to go over our bathroom. Our bathroom to our bedroom does not have a door. And when one person gets up early, it's like, ah, oh, the light. Or you hear them blow drying their hair, blah, 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 you know. So he knows I love barn doors and he is making it a barn, do barn door for me. So now I'm just gonna top stitch. I'm not gonna change to my compensating foot. I'm just gonna use my little one eight foot deal. I got on a four and a half. And make sure you always check your pressure on your presser foot. Because if it's too heavy, it'll leave marks. Back stitch. Needle down, pivot. Worn down. I don't know if y'all saw my previous video today. Yes, I'm doing two videos in one day, and hopefully I'll get this uploaded in time for it to be today. But normally when the videos are longer, it takes two days. Takes one day to export and unload, upload, and then by the next day I can publish it. So I'm just doing one eighth of an inch seam allowance. If I go too fast, my stitches get smaller, so I'm trying to keep it steady. Let me see how we're looking here. Yeah, going too fast. I need to slow it down. Get that pretty stitch. This car, I got my walking shoes. Well, it's, they're actually running shoes, but the shoes I walk in. My husband and I walked our two miles earlier today, a little over two miles. First time we've done it since we've been back from vacation. It was a little tough to get going. But the weather's a little warmer today, so we both said we gotta get out. Yesterday, I was too pooped. I cleaned house. So I've been neglecting the house because I've been working on sewing items. You know, I mean, I'm going to turn this to a one because I just want to go up just a hair. Just a hair more. Oh, I keep hitting it back stitch. I don't want to do that. And then pivot. And let's see if I got it. No, a little more. Yeah, that should do it. Turn it back to a four and a half. And start again. Now my edge coat is drying. I did decide to go ahead and and uh, paint those little purse handle overlays because it looks like it's going to turn out. Even if it doesn't dry as thick, it still will cover the the back of the vinyl that shows through. Anyway, I was saying I have my running shoes on, so it has, they're a little heavy, I'm a little heavy footed on my pedals. I may have to take them off. And down we go. I have my AirPods in, so I'm hoping you guys can hear me, even though they pick up every noise in the book. On down, on down. I will link in the description box the video I watched. Um, the girl that made the homemade edge coat paint. I don't remember who it was, but I know I saved the video. And you can watch her if you want to see what she does paintbrush to me worked better and that foam brush may even work fine with it so that's not bad 
not bad. I probably should have used my compensating foot, but anyway. Those are my straps. Put those to the side. Let's see, how am I going to do this? I need to do my zipper. I'm doing this all from memory. Scary, scary thing. But I think what I need to do, because I want to do a recessed zipper, I need to do, do I need to do? I need to do more vinyl. I may have to cut more vinyl. Let me think about this for a minute and I'll bring you back. Okay, I think I've got my head wrapped around it. So what I've done, I've prepared my zipper. This is 18 inches long. And so I marked down an inch on the zipper. Do you see the white line? And I'm going to fold it down like that. And then I'm going to bring, bring this up like that. And let me stick a pin in it so you can get a good look. So there it is. And then I'm just going to top stitch it or stitch it close from this angle. And I'm going to put it right on top of my pin. Pull my pin out and then stitch it closed. Typical um, 2.5 inch connecting stitch. Okay, whoops. Then I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim this off. And there you have your zipper. And I'm also going to burn the edge a little bit. Unzip it. That kind of melts it together and it stays. And then I, I sew a little stitch on the end here just to so I would not pull the zipper off. You know me. And so then that's preparing your zipper. And then this is doing a recess zipper. And then I took my quarter inch double side tape and put it on here and just folded it over. So it's folded over for about a quarter inch. I did that on all my pieces, lining and exterior. So I'm gonna take an exterior piece I'm going to measure in about three eighths of an inch. Where is my little ruler? So I'm going to use my chalk and measure in three eighths of an inch. This little ruler shows you exactly three eighths of an inch. I'm using my little chalk chalk roller. I'm going to do three eighths of an inch there. I'm going to go ahead and mark the other one while I'm at it. I may need to mark a different side. Okay, so I'm going to put my ruler back in its place or it will get lost. So this is where I'm going to put my zipper face down, right side up on the exterior, face down. And I'm going to start my zipper right there where my little mark is. I'm going to get my clips and clip it. Unzip it, it'll be easier to attach, and you just go on down and clip it, and then we're going to baste it in place. And we're only sewing to 
the end of your exterior. Okay, so let's sew that down. Using 2.5 stitch length, and I'm just gonna, I'm basting, I'm just doing 1 8 of an inch. I'm gonna start in a little bit. Actually, I'm not gonna start at the end because I need to get that down. Back stitch, and just go on down. Is that a good view? Is my hand getting in the way? And come to the end, just back stitch right at the end of the extended lining. Now we're going to take our lining piece, and I'm using water proof canvas, and I'm going to lay it right sides together, right side with the exterior, and just sandwich your zipper in between. And just line them up. I'm going to put that thread. Sorry, bugging y'all just as much as it's bugging me. Oops. I'm just going on down, I'm clipping. Trying to do it with my left hand. So y'all can see, but I'm just going to turn this way. Maybe y'all can see better. Take those clips off. Put in as many clips as you feel like you need. And make sure your ends match up down here. And that's pretty good. If they didn't, I would move one of the, um, move this back to match it up. Maybe I need to move it back just a little bit. No, I think I'm good. So now we're gonna go down. I need to pull my thread out some. And I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. This is only sewing on the top part. We're not going to sew around yet. We got to turn it out. And so I'm just going down to the end. Back stitch. That didn't look right. And then I'll pull too soon. Pull my thread out. Oh, I'm caught again. Why am I caught again? Yes, my Juki has a needle threader, but it, it rarely works. And so, as much as I like to try it every time, it's just almost a waste of time. But I still love it. I still love my Juki. So now we're going to trim that thread, fold it back out. And pull your zipper out. And we are going to stitch all the way around. Put some clips in it. This is not, I don't have a pattern I'm following. It's just a regular tote bag. I'm just going to clip the bottom of it because we'll keep it pulled out. Well, I can keep my hands from pulling it off. 
You could take it to the iron and iron on the side of the um, waterproof canvas, but not the vinyl. This is actually faux leather. Actually called faux leather, not vinyl. And so I'm just going to start here and just sew all the way down and around. And I'm going to keep it at a 2.5 stitch length. And I'm going to do one eighth of an inch stitching it together. Now we always have to remember that we're going to need to adjust our. Um, I'm going to just one little more. I'm going to put it on one and a half. There we go. Go back to two and a half. Because this is thick right here, I may need to adjust my pressure on my presser foot. So I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. Because it can stretch your vinyl or your leather if it's too hard. You don't want wrinkles in it. So I'm just going on down. down, turn, or pivot. Go down. I might lighten, lighten my pressure. A little bit. I'm feeling like it's a wrinkle here. Let me pull these off. I don't really need them anymore. Lighten a little bit more. That leg's bothering me. See, I got a gap here. That's going to show up at the end. Trim my threads and I'm gonna burn them a little bit. I am loving my new cart, by the way. If y'all didn't see my last video, I got a steal of a deal at Aldi with my cart. I've been looking for one, and the single one for 55 on up. So there's one side my recessed zipper now. We're going to take it right sides together. Right side down, I guess I should say. And we're going to mark. Where did I mark that? I marked it there. So I need to mark here. And that's where we're going to start our zipper. So you could do it this way. Line your zipper up. Let's clip. We're just going to do one at a time again and base this together. like it might rain outside. This 
supposed to rain a little bit this morning, but it didn't. So the hub and I went on a walk. It's tough getting back walking. Woo! I mean, even just being off a week, it was. Once I got going, I was fine. But man, starting out, woo! It was a slow pace starting out. You think you're going fast, you feel like you're going fast, and it's you're not. Okay, here we go. We're gonna base this down one eighth of an inch. 2.5. You could do a longer stitch length if you want, but I'm just leaving it at 2.5. Okay, I'm going to move my zipper pull out of the way. Back stitch. Now we're going to I guess I need to trim my threads. They end up bothering me. We are going to put the lining on. The last piece to our recess zipper. And I've got the lining up, and so I'm putting it down, and I need to mark it. So if I'm going to do that, I need to mark it right here. One eight, not one eight, three eighths of an inch in. And pull it down. Match our zipper up with that spot and make sure these are together. Making sure I was doing the right side. I'm like, oh, that feels like the regular side. Now, this looks like it might be a little bit longer. Maybe not. If it is, I'll just move the uh, fold the ends and more or decrease it decrease the fold this looks a tad bit longer maybe not okay just my eyesight Okay, I'm put the correct clip back in the correct box. And now we're going to stitch this down with a quarter inch seam allowance. Check the pressure of your pressure cut. Way. Put your foot and move it out of the way. Y'all know the Okay. Now fold this side out together. Making sure it's a tad bit off. I don't think it's going to be that big a deal. So I'm pulling it apart. Gonna line it up. And clip. This is a little off up here. I'm not sweating the small stuff. For sure. Now on waterproof canvas, you can iron the good side, but the back side you can't iron it because it'll melt. Just FYI. 
and you can never iron that directly. I have used an iron with Teflon on it, Teflon sheet to cover it. And then when I use my heat press, I always put the vinyl side down and then press it. Okay, so now we're gonna stitch this all the way around like we did this one. And I'm wondering if it looks better with or not. We're gonna do this side. Oh, this is so soft. I'm gonna try and get all the wrinkles out of it. And your freehand clipping. Okay, one eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna turn it to. Did I do a 2.5 on that? It looks like I did. Ugh. I should have done a four. But since I did a 2.5, we're keeping it there. Pressure on my presser foot's pretty light. Prettiest top stitching because it's 2.5. The tears with the tears. Now you might have to clean your needle. I forgot to check that. Because you know all that double side tape we went through. Get you an alcohol wipe. This is what I use. You know, I got organized in my little new cart and I gotta figure out where I organized it too. <laughs> Which drawer did I put in? So I buy a box of these off Amazon. And they come in little packages. And I just use them to clean my needle when I'm using double side tape. I was using them, I bought them because I was cleaning, like I was making, I was doing mugs with set, sayings on them from my crib, my, my silhouette. And um, you have to clean it with alcohol surface. You have to clean the surface with alcohol. And so your sticker will stick. And then I wanted to sell them. So I bought those to put the package and I bought these little um, card things like a little credit card thing so when you scraper uses a scraper to put your saying or logo or whatever you want sticker on your item I did some coffee mugs I did a lot of signs with um, using um, artist canvases and taking off the canvas part and using the wooden part of the frame and staining it and then putting the whatever saying I did on there. I did it for a couple of weddings that turned out pretty. There's our recess zipper. So that's what I was using it for. So now got that done and I want to leave this long a tail for the bag. I may cut it off some. I don't have any rose gold zipper ends, so I'm going to put a tab on this end. Do I want to do that now? Sure. I have to cut it though. Okay, let me walk over here. Find a piece of scrap vinyl, which there is many. Where is that? Uh, where did I put it? Oh. I left it over here. Hello. Okay. I 
I'm going to make it one and a half inches by one and a half inches. Yeah, I think I might make it one and a half by two. I think I'll do that by two. So it's one and a half by two. Let me see if that's what I'm gonna like. I can always cut it down. And when I use vinyl for my tabs, I use a double side tape. Let me see if that's what I want. That's gonna be thick, isn't it? Yeah, that'll be okay. So I'm gonna find the middle of my little tab and I see the crease and I'm just gonna put a piece of half inch double side tape in the center. I only use my paper scissors with the sticky tape. I don't use my kids sewing scissors with that. That's just me personally. I only use these with thread so they'll stay sharp. I don't want to have to buy scissors all the time. So I'm going to fold this to one side and then fold this to one side. And then I'm going to put it on my zipper end and fold it like that. Now, I think what I might do also, that's a little thick. I don't know if I need to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Since I started that way, what I could have done is just do an inch and fold it over and leave the end too late. I think I'll use my quarter inch tape this time. Put it down the center. This is just helping it stay, helping it stay folded over until you sew it. You don't have to use this. But so I do that and I center it the best I can. Fold it over. I am going to put some clips on it. Just to hold it till I get underneath my needle. And then you just top stitch. I'm going to put it at a three because it's pretty thick. Back stitch. And then you just come on over. Back stitch. Okay, now I'm going to, oh, it's going to float over in the trash. Hello. Trim it and make it even with my zipper. your zipper in. Make sure you call in the back. Okay, so the recess zipper is done. Let's put the bag together. Now, I gotta think about when I want to do my handles. Do I want to do them now or later? Now or later. That used to be a candy when I was growing up. It's called now or later. Hard candy. We loved it. We bought our bikes out to the 7-Eleven store, and I think it was like a nickel for an hour later. May have been a penny. I can't remember. I know there was a now later stick, and I know there were squares. I think. Anyway, so I think I'm gonna do my handles later, and just start putting this together. So we're gonna put right sides together. 
This is so stinking thick. Oh, goodness, I hope this works. If not, looks like I'm going to be doing it. Another one. Where are my clips? I've learned my lesson on Deckerville Heading. And her bag was pretty floppy, so she may not like this. I'm going to line up the top. I don't feel like it's quite lined up. Well, Renee, get your act together. <clears throat> line up the centers. I've already clipped to show, mark my center. And then the sides come out. I need to trim some. Not a big deal. What's going to be a big deal is trying to square off these corners with that deck of the the way I was thinking that day, but I don't like wasting, so I'm going to finish it. I'm going to trim this down just a tad. Because that lines up pretty good over there. Get my vinyl scissors. My fabric scissors need sharpening. I forgot to get my son to sharpen them when he was home. For Christmas from school. Maybe a tad bit more. That'll work. Save this tab for something later. Now let's just finish clipping. Now on the exterior, I'm just going to sew down. I can turn it right side up for you. Sew down here, sew across here, sew up here. I'm not sewing right here on each corner. That's why I'm going to box. I guess I need to keep those out. That's why I'm going to box my corners. rock and roll. I am going to do, I think I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to do a half inch. That's right at that. Maybe I'll do decisions, decisions. Maybe I'll do three eighths of an inch and then trim it down when I need to. So what I'm thinking is, if I do a total half, it's going to be hard to match these up and sew through top stitch through it on the corners. So I'm going to do three eighths. Turn with two point five. Sorry, way down. I need to put some pressure on it. Maybe a little more pressure. It starts wobbling and it's not getting traction and it's either too much pressure or not enough pressure. I need to get that tape that's got marked for me and put it there. I gotta find out where you get that. 
I'm sure Amazon's got something like that. I've seen it on several people's sewing machine that I want instead of my marker. Which is a permanent marker, but it'll come off with alcohol. I'm believing. <laughs> I'm sure it does with something. Rub the alcohol and it'll come off. It rubs off anyway, pretty much. Okay, so now we're gonna box our corners. Here's the challenge. Woo! Thick and heavy. So you definitely want to um, nest your seams. Go have one one way and one the other. Pull it out some. I have to do a quick tote if this doesn't, if it's too thick. She may like the floppy. I mean, obviously she does. She's still carrying it. And maybe just because it's real leather. I don't know. And she got a deal on her. <laughs> I don't know. That's not working out even. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it all even there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Matching up the centers, the seams. And then this other side. Ain't a lot. I'm going to try and pull this. I might do the lining instead of this because this is so thick. There's no way I could get it through that little hole. My hands would be hurting for days if I could even do it. Oops. We're on a clip. I have misplaced so many clips. I mean, I'm getting down to nothing. I sweep them up, but who knows what happens to them. Okay, I'm going to still do 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I can't see this. I wonder if I can move you. Where can I move you guys to? Let's see. I'm going to move you around. See if I can get this to work. And maybe you can see better. And you've got to put that pole down there. Okay, now let's see. Where's my sewing machine? Right there. I can see a little bit better. Try holding this thick thing down. Woo! I think I've made a major mistake on this, but we're going with it. It is what it is. Okay, I'm still doing 2.5 stitch length. I'm going to back stitch. So I'm trying to hold this heavy duty thing down. Do that three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Mercy. That was not easy. Okay. Rocking all on this side. Line it with my three eighths. Okay, woo! Might trim those a little bit. I might need to sew over it again. It's so thick. I don't know. Let's see if we can even turn this bag out. Oh, Renee. Move you over here just to see. Yeah, the bonnet woman just to get this turned out. I might just mix it right here and there and start on another one so I don't waste the lining. Because I don't know if 
this is going to work. Oh my stars. What do y'all think? Mix it and just get a new one. Cut out new pieces. And then save this for somebody else that might like it thicker. If I can even do it. I cannot get this one part here. I'm working it the best I can. Just thinking about should I even finish this because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out the corners. I break a finger, break a nail, break them both. Okay, I got that out. Oh, please believe it or not. I mean, I do like the way it feels with the heavier Decaville, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to turn it when it comes to the end. Can I do it? Okay. Oh, I think I need a break. Oh, I need a rest after that. Whew. Okay, my advice to you is don't ever use Decaville Heavy for the lining. Only on the bottom, use Decaville Heavy. I don't know, it still feels pretty good. Should I continue? I'm going to give it a whirl. She may not like it this thick, though. Okay, put that to the side. Let's do the same thing for the lining. I've already cut my corners on my lining and just gonna match them up the centers. Mm, I'm out of breath. I need a sip of water. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Sorry. That was just of what kind of shape I'm in. That was not easy. I'm going to match up tops first and I'll match up the sides. I did three eighths of an inch seam allowance, right? Isn't that what I did on that? And I want to do a little bit more on the lining so it won't sag. So I might do a half inch or a tad over. It's getting dark. How long have we been on? Well, this time we've been on 43 minutes, not counting the other times I've stopped. That's a lot of noise, isn't it? Okay.
Now we're going to do the same thing we just did to the exterior to this with a little bit smaller seam allowance. Just a scant, because I'm afraid if I get this too small, you know, I'm not going to sew this up. I'm going to sew a little bit in maybe. I don't know if I'm going to sew a little bit in. I think I need this whole bottom just to, whew, just to pull it out. Okay, 2.5 stitch length. And I need to go. Now, I have, I have found I have not needed my Teflon foot with my Juki. It's been sewing pretty well without using my Teflon foot. But if you're finding, if yours, yours is sticking, let me put you down so you can see. If yours is sticking or um, not sewing well, then from the Teflon foot. I do have to sew a little bit in just to get a boxed corner. Oh, mercy me. Let me think about that. I'm going to sew up the other side. As I ponder my dilemma. Dilemma. I'm going to light my... I'm just going to stick my light the pressure. Um, domestic machines and semi-industrials. Adjusting your pressure on your presser foot is uh, a must. You must pay attention to it with a vinyl. Okay, and a waterproof canvas. Let's see. I'm going to go in. This is not very really even. That's better. even here for the bottom. I mean, I can trim it, but I think it can come down further. Okay, so I'm going to just go in an inch, maybe. See if that will work. And I'll go in an inch over here. I do. Oh. Yep, I did. I'm going to pause you so I can load my bottom. I thought I was. Okay, I'm back. I got my bobbin re-threaded. Um, I feel my bobbin, but I didn't notice I had some gunk on my needle from all the double-sided tape I've sewn through. So, I cleaned it off with my little alcohol wipe. Now we're good to go. You don't have to have the wipes. They're just easier and I had them on hand. So, that's what I'm using. Okay, let's do this again. A little over uh, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Five, Roll on down. I'm guessing what an inch is. So. Let's see if this is going to work. Boxing my corners. Oh, I ran out right there. Hello. Let me stitch this down. Ran out right about there. So I'm gonna go down here. Sewing, doing nothing, didn't even know it. Let me check my other side. 
same stinking thing. Ah, oh, if I only had a brain. Okay, let's do it. Not a big one. Okay, I gotta take a break pretty soon and go make dinner for my husband. I'm gonna trim all my threads and let's box these corners. But then I'll have to stop. For the time being. anymore there. I sure hope I can turn it turn through that spot there. Who knows? We shall see. We shall see. And I saw this new designer bag by Kate Spade that I want I want to do. It was really pretty. Simple. I mean, very plain, nothing, um, it had grommets and a tie through the center, like two, here's the whole bag, and then in the center, it had two grommets and it put a leather or vinyl tie through it. I thought, oh, I like a bag to, I've got one of my clips, okay, let's do our corners. Five stitch length still. I'm gonna do that too straight. I'm leave it okay. Later on, I'm going to put this through. Oh, I should do my handles first. But then I have to stitch through all that. I think I might do my handles first, but I'll have to think about it. And we gotta do our little, oh, I do wanna show you that the edge cut worked pretty good. Where's my other one? So here's our little tester. And it did pretty good. It covered the edge. And it's a little stiff like edge coat would be. There's the back of it, so you can see. And then these. Let me find the right side up. See the edge coat? So our homemade edge coat works. Smells like fabric softener though. Oh, it worked. Worked pretty good. That might need a little more. The thing about the only thing I found was with fuzzy backings, you have to kind of do it all the way on the back. Or it'll show. But I'm pretty pleased. Pretty pleased. So there you go, homemade edge coat. I'm gonna use it. I wrapped mine in, let me do this when we paint. Let me find it. 
find what I did with it. Wrap it in plastic like this and get the air out as much as possible. And I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And that way it won't harden up and I can use it again when I finish my bath. That's my story. Okay, gang. I'm going to pause for now and I'll get back on later and finish up the bath. I think I'm going to pause if I can find it. Okay, round two. Day two. Next day. So I put my name plate on the bag. I forgot to do that yesterday. And I measure where I'm going to put my strap. And what I realized, and I was thinking about this last night, was I don't have enough room to put this um, handle cover because I put my zipper pocket up too high on this bag. So we're not going to do that. But I did edge coat these today. Can you see that? And I used a blow dryer to blow dry them to make them dry quicker. I'm a little impatient. Got to get this going. Got to get it done because if it's too stiff, I have to do another one. Going to burn the little threads off. And I'm not using the mic again today because I have to charge my phone. So now I'm going to put my straps on. I don't think there's anything else. Oh, so when I did my name plate and had to punch a hole, I usually use this thing, got it from Amazon, right upside down. I don't think it is. That's what it's called. Or I have a crocodile, crocodile, and it has two whole different size hole punches on that. I was using this all the time, but then sometimes it's hard to get it in there. So this little uh, doohickey thing comes in very handy. And there's different sizes that you can use to punch holes. So that's what I use. Let me put it in my little drawer since I'm so organized now with my little organizer that I love. So now we're going to add the handles. Let's get this bag done and see if I can turn it. I'm going to pick my best side of my stitching and I'm going to put my handles where I mark and I think I've erased some of my markings here but I can still see them. So I'm going to sew a small, I may need to bring that down more because I really need to do like a one inch square. Don't you think? Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing here. Let me move you. Let me move you. I think you need to be down just a little more so you can see the... There we go. Maybe too much. Let me back you up with just a little bit. So it'll stay turned. Okay. Here's the story. Alexa, stop. So, my thinking is I'm going to do that much seam allowance. And so I need to make it, I don't want to put this in the seam where I, when I top stitch. So, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit further, I think. Let me measure it down. And then I got to draw the line again on this side because I wiped off the chalk. So I see where it was. I measured three inches over from the center and made a mark. And then I measured one and a half down. So I think I'm going to go to two. I know that's sitting close to the zipper pocket. Let me see how that's going to look. I'll also put all the measurements in the description because this isn't a pattern. This is just fly by the seat of your pants pattern with me of a tote bag. Let's see. If I move it down to there and just sew an inch and then I can put rivets. Is that going to look funny? 
this is what I do. You know what I mean? I just, I had to, with my nameplate, I went through three or four nameplates holding it up. Did that one look good? Did that one look good? The one I wanted to use didn't look good. So I ended up with this one. Let me see. On both sides. I think that'll be okay. Okay. So we're going for it. We're just going to put it down, line it up. And I'm going to clip it. Oops. And drop one strap, of course. I'm really dressed for success today. I have socks on. I have holes in them with my sandals. And uh, I was planning on going for a walk, but today um, I woke up with a bad case of TMJ on this side. And, man, it hurts bad. I laid on the heating pad, like it said. I took some Tylenol, like it said, and that didn't work. And so I took a pain pill. I need to look up. So I'm measuring two inches down and three inches across. I need to look up the little exercises you do to relax the muscle in your jaw. I don't know if y'all have ever experienced TMJ, but I have never experienced it this bad. It is painful. Can't you? Couldn't open my mouth. I'm gonna, those aren't staying very well, so I'm going to do my other kind. I ordered some pretty vinyl from Bodio. And my pump burger is having their big sale, and I think they got like an hour left. A little bit less than an hour. But since I ordered for Bodio, I just couldn't break down order. There was this one um, red patent leather that I am going to get. I'm going to get it because I want to make myself a red patent leather purse. Like that girl's in the movie. It was so pretty. Man, it was pretty. I am not getting this right here. It's like I don't have light. Do I have all my lights on? I have all my lights on. I might brighten this up just a little. I do not have on the same shirt as yesterday. Just FYI, if y'all are wondering. Well, yesterday, I was wearing my son's shirt from his school, from his college. And this shirt is the school I used to teach at. I'm gonna make sure I still have three inches and three inches. Okay. Now this is gonna be challenging to even get underneath there to sew it. Oh mercy, mercy me. I hope I don't have to mix this whole bag. Hmm. We may have to do a short run, just put a... Oh. This is what takes so long. Trial and error. It's just part of it. And you don't have a pattern. So I'm just going to do one and a half instead of two. And then I'll put two rivets next to each other. Stick to the first one. Oh, that's crooked. TMJ can be caused by grinding your teeth, not sitting straight, up straight, and stress, and what else were they saying? Poor posture because that's what's sitting up straight. I think what I'm going to do is stick some double side tape on this to help a sister out here. So I'm praying it goes away because it is. 
painful. I need to look up. There's exercises you can do. And so I need to look up. There's exercises to relax the muscle in your jaw. I mean, it even feels like I have an earache. Okay, I want that on the inside. So I'm going to put that there. So I'm putting it on the ends. I'm going to have it like this. I'm going to have it like that. I don't like that on the outside. I want this on the outside. Okay. So I need to do the other side. I was thinking wrong. Now, let's do our placement and just pray I can get it underneath my machine. I like the feel of the stiffness. She may not. And her bag is pretty floppy, but I still don't know if she cares just because it's leather. Real leather, which is hard to find or be able to afford a real leather purse these days. Used to be able to. I had several growing up, but not anymore. I can remember when Gucci was a thing and I was single. In my 20s, I think it was, I could not afford a Gucci purse, but everybody had one. So I spent, I paid $125 back then. And uh, not that I'm that old, but I am kind of old. <laughs> Getting there anyway. Um, just to have, say I had a Gucci purse. What a silly, silly mistake we do. Okay, so I'm going to bring it down. You know, I should mark this. I'm going to mark this just for my, to keep it even. Where I'm going to go across, because I'm going to leave all this up here, and I just want a small spot. Now, if I go a total one inch, or maybe if I do a quarter inch, because this is a half inch seam right here. Let me double check that. This is my process, y'all. I hope I'm, I'm not boring you, but this is why I, I don't use a pattern. It's just trial and error in your brain. I mean, when you do enough totes. So that's a half inch. If I do a quarter inch, it'll be easier to... So I need to do a quarter inch. And that way, so I'm leaving a quarter inch down here, and that'll be my seam. Because I don't want to sew the handles down. You know, when I top stitch, I want to be able to move the handles out of the way to be able to top stitch. So I think if I do three quarters of an inch across, that will be perfect. Okay. Let's do this again. I may just bend this enough to make it soft. Then we'll unclip. Keep it straight. Get it underneath my needle and then I'll move everything out of the way again. Fold it back. Way back. If I just get it attached and I can manipulate it more. Okay. Make sure it's straight. Y'all can't see a thing. Let me move in. There we go. Maybe that's better. Okay, I'll make sure I got my thing straight. And this is out of the way. I'm gonna put my needle down. There, that's better. Okay. So I'm going to light my pressure on my presser foot because it's pretty thick. 
and we're going to go across, back stitch. I'm going just across my line, and then I'm going to line it up where I've already stitched on the handle. I'm going to needle down and pivot, make sure my purse is pulled back, and I'm going to go sew a square basically. Where the other, here we go, other line is sewn, needle down, pivot. Bringing my, staring up, <laughs> bringing my light down, hitting it. Okay, we got this, we got this. because it's stuck up in here. Okay, needle down and pivot. If I can, if it'll let me. Oh, it is so stiff. What was I thinking? Okay, there's one. And I'm going to put a rivet there just to secure it even more. Since I'm here, I'll just go ahead and do it across the line there. Let me see if I got that straight. I did. Praise the Lord. Okay. Take that off. Get this there in the needle. It is getting my exercise today on my strength in my hands and arms. Okay, same thing over here. Back stitch. I need a little more pressure. It's not moving. Okay, needle down and pivot. Making sure the bottom is out of the way. I'm just going to sew on the line that I've already sewn with the handle. Making sure I don't get my finger caught in there. I'm having to push it some because it's just so sticky. Because it's so stiff. Okay, we're going to try and sew across. Get it through there. Okay, needle down, turn again. I mean, I have my pressure put up, but it's sticking to the table. Okay, and up, and then back stitch. Okay, one side done. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. I'm going to trim my threads, and there I've done a little square. This one's better than that one, but I'll put a rivet there just to secure it even more. And I edge-coated, edge-coated, put edge-coat on. This is chalk right here, so I'll wipe that off on the end, so it just, it's all black. I'm loving that homemade edge-coat. Okay, now the torture for the back. Torture! chalk has come off and so I'm going to redo it. I see it a little bit. I'm 
do this one again. machine goodness gracious sorry my phone cut out on me and I had to load up some stuff and delete some stuff to have some storage okay so I finished the front and now let's finish the back so I'm just gonna oh I'm gonna use double side tape again and this is from Dollar Tree. What did I do with it? I didn't put it back in a spot. And my organizer. Did it fall off? One momento, one momento. I'm losing my mind. What in the world did I do with that? Oh, I am losing my mind. I did not put it back in its spot. That is a problem. Okay, again, just cut some pieces. And I'm not, I'm only sewing through a little bit of this across the top. So it really shouldn't affect my needle too much you know do i see a little spot there so i'm putting my double side tape in the center make sure i'm doing it on the right side i want the pretty not the side we sewed together but the side that's just folded over showing okay I have to pull some of this tape off. I made it too long. Roll it down some. Okay. Now, I'm going to on the outside of my line. Put it down. Tape it down and still use clips. Make sure we got it turned right. I've got another order I've got to get done. This is why I want a web website. Because I can just put it up on the website and it is what I have. You know, not custom orders. I would rather just people buy from what I put on my website. Okay, put my tape back where it belongs. And let's do this again. That looks shorter to me. It's supposed to be one and a half. And this is one and a half. Okay. Eyesight's going to. Now let's do the struggle of getting it underneath with another handle, too. So I just moved it with my knee left there. I'm going to fold it back. Oh, I got to put across, measure across my little square. So it'll be straight. As straight as you can. Oof, that went crooked, didn't it? Okay, now let's see. Let's do this side since we got that strap underneath. Let me see if I can just, since I got that strap, pin it down. That is better, I think. If 
y'all hear some hammering and sawing my husband is back at it making me a barn door for our bathroom okay i'm keeping it at 2.3 uh, 2.3 2.5 um stitch length for now because i really want it to connect it needle down. Let's turn this baby. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier. Pull it down. I don't know if y'all can see this. The struggle is real today, folks. Okay, now this is the part that gets it's difficult. Okay, let's see. Come on now. Whew. Make sure everything's out of the way. I'm going to sew straight across. Needle down. Stars. A clip flew up in my shirt, on my arm. Okay. Last one on this. Thank goodness. My thread is all kind of wonky. Let me fix my thread. Did I pull the tape off? Yeah. I'm like, that's not sticking, did I? Y'all know me and my brain. I could have started this and not pulled the tape off, and that's supposed to help me keep it down. Hello. Okay. Almost done with this strap. That's another thing, too. When you have it so thick, you gotta remember to put your presser foot down. It seems like it's down because it's so thick, but it's not, and that can use you a nest with the bobbin. Underneath. I don't know why I back stitched there. Habit of back stitching. Okay, I'm going to pull these off, get them out of the way. Needle down and pivot. to help it here. Watch the fingers. Last row. Okay, let me trim my threads. And then we're going to put a rivet in them. Trim that one. There we go. She likes a shoulder bag, so that's going to be a shoulder bag. Now, let's put a rivet. I'm going to scoot under here and pull my stuff out. I do not have can press. Maybe one day. Hopefully soon, but when I sell a purse, I usually order more vinyl or accessories to make the purse, like zippers and stuff. 
So since I did a like a gunmetal there, I want to do a gunmetal here. And I hope I have more gunmetals. That one I do not. I got these at um, Amazon, of course. I do have some gunmetal here. So y'all probably don't need to see this. What I'm going to do is punch a hole. Or maybe I'll just do one on camera and then do the other off camera just to save time. But I do this with all my, how I do all my rivets. Get my back. to the side. Put my clips up. I'm going to bring this up. This is a handy little thing. Getting I got this up from Prime Video. <laughs> no, Alexa, I wasn't talking to you. Alexa, stop. I might need to turn her off. Just being nosy. Listen to everything I say. Sorry, something went wrong. <laughs> You know, Big Brother's watching. Okay, so I'm going to get my little Japanese hole punch thing. I think it's Japanese. And I got the side I want on there. I mainly keep that on there. And I'm going to hole punch. And I'm going to try and eyeball it from here. So if I make a little mark there, make a little mark there. And that looks about center. So all you do, since your hole punch thing is already on there, you just press down. And so I'm going to stand up. I'm going to eyeball it. For me, I'm eyeing it correctly and push down. Oops, I don't think it went all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna have to go on a harder surface, so I'm gonna move over here. Hang on one minute. This is not going through it. So let me pause you guys and get this hole punch going. I'll bring you back. Okay, I got my holes, holes punched. And I'll, you could also use this. You have used this um, because that's a short thing. But the other one to me was easier to use. I got this at a, a yard sale, thrift sale. Um, to help support some missionaries. They had a house full of stuff and they sold a bunch of stuff. And this was one of the things I got. You can get them new on Amazon. They're not that expensive, but I do like this because you don't have to um, worry about getting it underneath, you know, if it's long enough or whatever. Okay, so this is what I do. I put my Rivet it through there. My dog is at the door. I'm going to turn it over. I'm trying to see if y'all can see this. So let me put the other one through too. I need four. I only pulled out two. Got two handles, but you need four rivets, Renee. Four rivets. Okay, so I'm going to stick. Whoops. Something underneath here. My roll of toilet paper that I used to blow my nose. <laughs> real life, people. Real life. I need to pin that back or something. So, I pull it through there. And what I do is I have this glue. It's jewelry glue from metal. For jewelry and metal. And I put a little dab on the top. I need to get those handles out of the way so it doesn't 
get glue on it. And I just put a little dab on top of there. Of course, that's a big dab. Let me wipe some of it off. I bring a little bubble up and put it on there. And I do the same for this one over here. A little bubble. Put it on the top. Put my glue down. And then I put the cap on it. Hopefully not getting it on my nail polish where I have to paint my nails again. And you hear it, you can feel it clip into place. And then all I do is I take this on this side and I take the whole, the well, it's got like a well and I give it a whack. And so I'm going to go do that. Finish that up and I'll come back. Okay, I got my rivets in. And they're done. And now we're going to put the bag together. Okay, so I had to think again about this. So what I did, I probably should put this on before I put the line together. But, you know, this is a fly by the city of your pants tote that I'm doing. Um... You know, if I was smart, I'd write everything down, even though it's fly by the seat of your pants. Just write my steps down so I can boom, boom, boom. Maybe I'll do that next time. So I attached one side with the right side of the lining up and the right side of the zipper up. So basically, you have the lining pieces together. And I, and I attached one side. Then I brought, I twisted this and brought it over this way. And then attached it the same way. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because you want to be able to zip your zipper right. So it's over here. And we're like this. Right? So we're like this. So I come over. Let's see if I can do it. I come over here. And I twist it twice. Because you want your lining sides together with the right side facing up. Lining sides together, right side facing up. So I would twist it twice. So we're just going to clip it. Man, I'll be glad when this is done. I hope it works out. I will never use Deckerville Heavy for lining again. Not lining, but for interfacing the whole bag. Just making sure they're lining up. So now we're going to stick them together. I'm going to keep it at a 2.5 stitch length. And I'm just going to baste it on. I mean, I'm still keeping it at 2.5, but I'm just going to do a 1.8 single round. I think I need to do a little more heavy, heavier pressure so it will move. There we go. Almost done, folks. Thanks for hanging with me. And my struggles. I'm really probably just torturing myself. If I was a little more organized, I just like to get sewing. But you know, it'd probably make my life easier sewing if I got a little more organized in my thought process. You can fly by the seat of your pants, but just have it organized with your steps. next bag is a little tricky so 
know I'm trying to pull uh, different other patterns where I know I've done that step before and apply it. It's not, this isn't a pattern I've ever done. I'm creating it myself. I'm not making a pattern out of it. Oh, I'm not a pattern maker. You know, I am working on this one pattern. I got it scanned, that the Linnell bag I made, I created that pattern. And I scanned it, but I gotta test it and see when you put it together, does it come out right? Okay, so let me trim my threads. And now, so you twist your, see, so when you open it up, the right sides will be together. Oh, no, wait. Please tell me I didn't do that wrong. So it's going to zip like that. That's right. So when I open up, I want to see this. Oh, goodness gracious. So I'm going to unzip it, and I've already put my tab on, so it's not going to go off. I'm going to unzip it all the way, and let's put this bag together. I'm going to pull it back out with the wrong side of lining, tucked in. side of your bag. I want my zipper inside zipper pocket to be in the back. And I'm going to cram this in. Hopefully not ripping anything. I'm going to do I'm going to try this little extra thing at the end. I don't know if it will work. If it doesn't, then I have a new bag myself. So we're going to tuck our handles in. It is bulky. I'm going to flatten this out. Okay. So now we're going to pin. Get in on there. Start in the middle this time and pin our middles. Not pin, clip. Pin is when you're sewing garments. That's going to be tricky right there. Should have gone down a little bit further. So I'm going to pin my ends. Maybe I should do my ends first, which I normally do. Let's pin the end. Not pin, clip. Sorry. Clip the ends. I am anxious to see if this is going to work with this Decaville Heavy. Let me go do the other end. I might oh, try and tuck it in. I'm going to butterfly that, open that up. Would be less thick. I'm off camera. I get going and forget that I'm supposed to be showing y'all. <laughs> Not that you don't know already how to do this. I think most of my friends are already bag makers. I'm going to put another one there. Y'all just put up with me and my sewing. Hopefully, I encourage and motivate you to try things. Create your own patterns. I think once you've done a tote or two, you know the basics of a tote. It's just I use Decaville Heavy. Because, you know, I don't have a brain. Missing my brain. that all the way down there 
I'm going to butterfly this in. Open up the seam. That's what I mean by butterfly. Just the seam on the exterior. Are y'all as anxious to, as I am to see if this is going to turn out? Oh, my word. I think I love punishing myself. Making life difficult. Oh, I did want to ask y'all. If y'all have experienced TMJ and there's some exercises you can do to relax a muscle, please share it with me. Oh, mercy. I'm going to research that when I finish this bag of what I can do because you can't live on pain pills. I don't like doing pain pills anyway. This is going to take a lot, a lot of clips. I'm going to go over here for a minute. I should have put that handle down even more. Live and learn. This is my life story. Live and learn. I know several things next time, if I can remember. I am going to be 61 in March. No, I really am feeling old now. 60 wasn't too bad. But, I tell you, all these issues with my knee. Now, my knee, I tore my MCL and had surgery 15, 20 years ago. So, that's kind of just an old wound that's just gotten worse and... It's bad, so I'll probably have to have a knee replacement. Hopefully not soon. Hopefully. It's a little wrinkled right here at this point, and so I'm trying to straighten it out. Oh, this is gonna be a chore sewing it together. Should I film it or should I not? Oh. <laughs> I want to cry. I got to finish it though. We've come this far. Now I'm going to do it from the inside because that's just going to be easier to do that instead of trying to move the bag. I am going to keep it at a 2.5. I may move it to a 3 just to go over. Well, I'm not going over the handles right now. Boy, I can't get this back. Oh, mercy. <laughs> you gotta laugh or I'll cry. Okay, where am I? This is the front. No, this is the back. So I'm gonna start over here. And I'm gonna start in the center. I need to fix that right there because that's right by the handle and I need it really. And I need to keep it at a quarter inch. Probably should do a scant quarter inch. Okay, folks, here we go. Back stitch. I am going to be going slow just to get this right. Yeah, you've come this far. You want it to be right. I wasn't piece two was coming out because of all the struggle through it. Here we go near the handle. I'll move that down just a bit. Oh, I couldn't have gone any further. That's going to be a bear to top stitch. Y'all, why do I do this to myself? I probably should have just pulled it off and made another... Goodness gracious, alive. Move my stiletto here. Let's 
Maybe it's not. Um, what can I do? What can I do? All these are coming off. It's so thick with the handle, it's not even. Okay, that's better. as far as I can to the end. Swing it up. Flatten it out. I know y'all can't see it. I apologize. I just trying to get this done. If I can swing y'all around on the other side. Not that you really want. See, it's just a struggle. It's a pure struggle. Let's see. Okay. Now you can see some. See the struggle of a bad decision. Now y'all know not to ever do that. I should have known. But it's my head in the way. I need to move it over so my big old head doesn't get in the way. me trying to see. Coming again to a strap. I'm going to put more. This, um, I think I got it for a woodworking shop that I did with my kids when I homeschooled them. I don't know where I got it from. Or no, I think I used to do, uh, when I used to do cards, I would rub, um, some kind of thing I used to do. I don't know. Some kind of craft. Charge extras for my struggle. <laughs> it's my own fault, so I can't do that. Oh, I should have left that there. See, the strap comes up, and I need to keep it down. Yes. Open. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, I will be cutting that part out. I pulled you over. Cause uh maybe I need just need to move this to the front. Yeah, I just move that to the front. That will be cut out. Okay, continuing on. I'm going to have to go back around on it, that's for sure. Almost to the end. down. 
some parts is just a scant quarter inch, so I'm gonna have to go back over it to make it even. One more strap to go through. Oh, help me, help me. go back over. Oh my word, that is really poor stitching. Poor stitching! This is all crooked right here. More than a quarter inch. So I'm going to take that out. So I'm going to pause y'all, fix this, and then I'll show you. Okay, I went back around. I'm going to cut out a lot of my sewing because I think I was jerking y'all around too much with that other view. So now we're going to pull it through the bottom, and hopefully we can get it through. And hopefully it's not that bad because I really don't want to make this bag over again. I certainly will not do it with Decaville Heavy. I don't want to rip my lining. It sounds like it's ripping, doesn't it? Okay, almost there. See if I did things right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, let's tuck it in and see. I'm gonna zip that zipper because I'll unzip it in a minute. Oh, gang. Almost done. I just want to see if I did this right. We got top stitch, and then I also want to. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. But I don't like the shape coming out like this, so I'm going to box it out, or I'm going to try to. Like, put a little stitch. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Like, right there and right there to make it square. But I don't think I'm going to be able to now because I could do it not at the top and just do it right there. Boy, this top stitching is going to be a bear. A bear. Bear. Let me say that again. It's going to be a bear. Okay, so let's close up our pockets. I'm not getting stuck. Okay. So I'm going to take, I'm going to open up my interior zipper pocket, pull the lining through there, and close up my lining. Oh. 
Oh, it's so wonderful when you finish a bag, but I just got to figure out how to make a little more square. Hip to be square. There you go. Pull out as much as you can. Oh my, there we go. Because I had to leave such a large opening. light at the end of the tunnel and I'm tired <laughs> oh me I am here for you guys to learn from my mistakes that's my sole purpose but keep going there you go keep going That's going to be a bear right there. Let's just see how hard we can make my life. Let's just see. Point five stitch length. I'm just doing a quarter inch allowance. Oops, I keep moving y'all around. Y'all gonna be dizzy after this. I got underneath the bed, underneath the table, the armoire. They're kind of like socks in the dryer, they just be disappearing. So, my little methane came in bed. Oops, I hit you again. I'm gonna move my cart. Y'all gotta go see the deal of the century I got. If you haven't seen that video yet, it's a short one. Short, short. Okay, we're gonna stick this back through. Press it down. And now we're gonna close up our interior zipper pocket. I'm going to put a little clip there because I ironed it down, but that has faded away. Okay, let's close. This up. Okay, come on now. Stone tote bag is really not as difficult. <laughs> there just will be days. I think mine goes in the weeds. 2.5 stitch length. Back stitch. And this bag is.
sticking to my table. No, I got that. And believe me, this doesn't have to be perfect because there is no one going to look at the inside of their pocket. You're just going to make sure your stuff stays. There's no holes in the pocket. So I don't put that. Okay. Trim my threads. it in and now we got a top stitch yep now we have to top stitch I'm going to tuck everything in you know what I might do I'm going to iron the inside to soften it up a little bit and I'm only ironing the lining but just to soften it some. So let me do that and I'll bring you back. Okay, I ironed the inside with my little small iron. I'm going to whip it up. So when you iron waterproof canvas, it smells like fish. Ugh. Phew. So we have got a, what I might have to do, I don't think I'm going to be able to get by my handles and top stitch it, but just top stitch it to the handle and then go around. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's right there. I think I'm gonna try, oh, am I gonna try my Teflon or my compensating foot here to keep it straight? That is the question. Okay, that's stick that's sticking, but it would it would keep it even, and I could possibly go through there. Whereas this, see, it kind of goes off because I don't have a thin one. Hmm. Well, let's try. What I could do is just do the compensating foot right here, and I gotta get rid of that tape that came up. I'm turning it to a five, maybe a four and a half. Each machine is different, so you gotta do what your machine does. Um, I'm gonna try the right compensating foot, and I'll have to loosen or lessen my pressure on my presser, pressure foot, presser foot. <laughs> lessen the pressure on my presser foot tongue tied I hear my husband sawing do y'all hear that okay let's give it a shot all we can do is try. Holding back the other side is what's going to be. See, I don't know if I, I can't do it that way. I'm just going to have to do it this way. Holding that back. So I'm going to... Boy, it's so sticky. You know what I need to do? I need a piece of tissue paper. Hang on one second, people. Let me get... Okay, so I got a big piece of tissue paper to go over here. I'm going to pull it a little bit here. And I'm going to pull these back. And I have to do it this way instead of doing it this way because there's just no way I can do it that way. It's just too thick. And I'm going to leave it out of the oven. I'm going to start next to the I'm going to 
to use this book. Next to the strap, I'm not going to do the strap right now. So I'm just going to top stitch on my strap back. On this back as much as we can. It is thick and I have really lightened the pressure. Let's see if this is going to work. It's going smoothly so far. The underside turns out pretty. Let's see what it's doing. If I can get by there. to get by there. Okay, I just went by a strap, so I made it by it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ironing did help, so that softened those corners. I need to unzip it. I'm not making this difficult on myself. Okay. Not the smartest or sharpest tool in the shed, for sure. Okay. Y'all probably cannot see a thing I'm doing, but I'm doing the best I can. Sweat. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Keep it going. Now I'm going to need to go up on this little thing. So I'm going to need my little piece of leather or vinyl. I organized it somewhere. I just don't remember where I organized it. There's a piece. I think this one's too thick. Let's try this one. I do have a hump jumper, but I think it's this just putting a piece on vinyl up against the back of it will help it get up there. There we go. See? Got another strap coming. Got to pull this back up some. I don't think I'll be able to make it through this strap. vinyl up there because we don't want our I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. I'm going by another strap. I'm going to put a little more pressure on it. It's not moving. Oh. Let's put this back 
with that sign. Will it turn out or will I need to just trash it or call it my own? That is the question. Y'all hang with me. We'll get to see the ending in just a minute. Try and pack another strap. We just got to remember one, never use Duckerville Heavy for interfacing on your whole bag. Two, um, that we have to just adjust our pressure 